for IB history level students studying paper three, North Africa in the Middle East. And this is for the option Middle East between the wars. And we're going to be looking at Egypt between 1914 and 1939. Um, and the, really the aim of this um, PowerPoint is to help you write an essay about Egypt in between the wars and looking at the different circumstances that's going on. So it is going to assume that you've done some reading and some content knowledge as well. But hopefully it will set you up to write some effective topic paragraphs about Egypt during this time period. So, of course, after the end of the First World War, the Middle East is in complete disarray with the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Um, all three of the countries that are the key players in the Middle East at this time, Turkey, Iran and Egypt, have been affected in different ways by the First World War. Um, Egypt probably is the most dynamic in terms of that they're actually struggling for independence. Turkey and Iran are doing internal modernization programs, but Egypt firstly really has to remove the massive influence of the British, that huge legacy of colonial imperialism and of course the British and French ownership of the Suez Canal, which will be a persistent problem for Egypt throughout this time period. World War I has a huge impact on Egypt and it's largely used as a staging post. Of course, for Britain, it's absolutely vital that control of the Suez Canal remains open and that access to India and the Asian colonies of the UK remains paramount for British interests at this time. Um, many Australian soldiers are actually stationed in Egypt. It was believed by the British that um, the climate of Australia better suited them to life in Egypt. And during the war, a number of big events happened that um, shape Egyptian life. Um, clearly, um, Britain moves in to take control of Egypt in a way that humiliates the Egyptians. And during the war, there are economic consequences for ordinary people, as you can see on the slide here. The two books that I'm referring to, ASD students, these are available in the Google Drive folder, and they're both widely available textbooks, Eugene Rogan on his history of the Arabs and Mansfield, his history of the Middle East. So both of them present slightly different ideas and priorities about how World War II impacted Egypt. But ultimately, as you can see from the quote from William Oxenwald there, the Egyptian public blamed the British for everything that goes wrong as a result of the First World War. But also by 1939, there's perhaps a feeling that Egypt is getting better, that things are improving. And there are some ideas that you might want to consider into this in terms of government stability as the Egyptians reorganise themselves through a series of Anglo-Egyptian treaties and also the emergence of a parliamentary democracy of some form. Um, Egypt today, as it was then, is the powerhouse of many Middle Eastern culture when it comes to music, writing and so on. Demographics, one of the big problems that Egypt will contend with during this time period is the massive and rapid growth in population. The economy, Egypt relies heavily on agrarian output, particularly cotton, and a pretty um, slow and stodgy industrialization process going on. Nationalism will be the key feature for Egypt during this time period as the Egyptians seek to move away from the sway of the British and establish some type of Egyptian independence within a framework of international relations. The question that we're going to have a look at is a to IB style question. Um, to what extent, how far, what ex how, how much things are going on? Is Egypt successful? And you can begin to break it down. The first thing we always want to know when we're looking at success or failure is what is the state trying to do? We measure success in terms of how far objectives are met. So the first thing you really need to clarify with is, is what criteria will you use to assess Egyptian success? If you go back to the previous slide, these are some of the criteria that you might use. How successful is Egyptian economic development? How successful is Egypt in terms of political stability? How successful in Egypt is in getting rid of the British and the British influence? The one way to approach this is to organise your notes into topic based ideas. So here for the economy, I've divided it up into things that are successful, things that are kind of here and things that are not successful. But remember, we measure success here in terms of a criteria that we've already set out. So clearly my criteria is looking for independent Egyptian businesses, looking for industrialization in Egypt, looking for increased output in cotton, looking to secure good prices for the things that they're producing. 
So as I've made my notes, I then go on to organize a paragraph that will help me do this. I've got a topic sentence that responds directly to the question, and I'm giving some reasons supported by evidence as to how the Egyptian economy was successful. As we work in history, we're always looking to build in a counter argument or a qualify, a kind of well, yeah, but not quite element to the paragraph. So actually, overall, I'm going to argue that the Egyptian economy has limited success for two reasons. Their main export, cotton, the, the world markets and that stagnate. But also in terms of industrialization, there really is very little going on in Egypt during this time period. So I've got a topic sentence, some explanation and some reasoning and also some specific evidence to support my point. As I move forward, then you can select other topics to go back through, maybe have a look at political stability, maybe have a look at the infrastructure of Egypt and have a look at where they succeed and fail in trying to remove British influence and establish an Egyptian national identity. So here's another question that is related to it. And again, it's a the same style of question that to what extent with a quote looking back on the previous decade so it's asking you about the same time period and it's asking you again to look at what the Egyptians have achieved and then again how far you agree that Egyptians can be proud of what has happened. If you prepare for a DPSA it's always worth spending your time thinking about the qualifiers, the arguments, the counter arguments, the terms that you're going to need to define. Clearly, achievements will we need to handle. What are you going to consider as achievements? Many Egyptians suggest that there are still some that don't agree. And of course, to what extent that ultimate IB command term asking you to look at a variety of opinions. And remember, there could be some areas where Egypt has been very successful and some areas less so. So in terms of social development, demography, public health, you might argue there has been some successes. Clearly, as I mentioned earlier, perhaps with the economy, not so much. One of the ways that you can approach this is by having a look at three different readings. Again, ASD students, these are all available in the Google Drive. So you want to collect some secondary information, looking at which historians are pointing out the different successes and failures. So they were the extracts that I assigned to our classes at ASD, and certainly um, readers, they're available for you in our shared Google Drive. As you organize your notes, there's two ways to approach a question like this. You can go in a chronological order, weighing up the different perspectives as you go. But as you know, in IB history, writing a chronological essay can sometimes lend to narrative, and sometimes you end up just writing lists of all the stuff that you know. So you might actually prefer, prefer to start your notes in a different way and just go thematic right from the start. Looking at it in relation to the question, I've got a column on the event, what actually happened, whether or not it's a source of pride for Egypt, my own opinions and ideas, and then the right-hand column, collecting some ideas from some of the historians and readings that I've been doing. Um, it might be fun to do this with a friend, get together and share your notes, look for areas of agreement and disagreement between the historians. And this can, again, help you build up your argument and counter argument as you approach. As I begin to think about planning my essay, I would like to propose some working answers, some of the things that I think I could go with as a leading idea or as a topic sentence or a hypothesis. So. In terms of political success, how did the Egyptians get on? We've got two massive treaties and agreements with the British in 1922 and 1936. We've got an Egyptian constitution being set up. We've got the emergence of political parties coming through. So all in all, I might give them a thumbs up there. However, most Egyptians remain poor, literacy levels remain low, public health care, perhaps not as good as it could be. So those massive social and economic inequalities remain. And actually, perhaps the ultimate aim of Egypt in this time period is independence and freedom from the British. Sadly, they don't manage to achieve that in this particular time period. As you plan your essay, you might want to think about the big events. As I said earlier, there's two big agreements with the British, the Declaration of Independence in 1922 and the Anglo-Egyptian Treaty of 1936 and the two constitutions of 1923 and 1930. You need to know the material in those things, and they will help you answer any question about Egypt during this time period, whatever the focus may be. 
Um, a good way to proceed then to think about your essay is to try and talk about your essay with a friend. Imagine that you're stepping into an elevator and your teacher is in there and they ask you, how's your paper going? And you might want to say, I'm working on the issue of Egyptian developments between 1919 and 1939. I think I can show that politically, in terms of stability, the Egyptians were quite successful. However, social and economic policies, not so much. My best evidence is the Anglo-Egyptian Treaty of 1936. So it's a good way of checking your knowledge and making sure that people understand and that you understand what you're talking about. So finally, a little health check. Anwar Sadat gives this assessment of Egypt as he takes over with the free offices in 1952. That Egypt has passed through a critical period in their history characterized by bribery, mischief, and the absence of government stability. Again, ASD students, you can go to Oxenwald, he's in the um, Google Drive, and have a look to see how these things impacted life in Egypt between the wars. Anyway, so this video should help you prepare for two slightly different essays, give you some ideas of the content and the thesis statements that you could use to answer such a question. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.